Hi, I'm Susie, and I'm super pumped today because I'm going to do an acrylic fade with five different pastel colors. Let's get started. I've got five colors I've chosen. I'm just going to put them here, and we'll start with the one, and we'll start with the thumb. Okay, so I have removed all of these. I've removed the acrylic off. I've left a thin layer of the acrylic on there. They're, I'm filling them basically, but I thinned it right down because this is a new nail we're constructing on top. So when you do that, you really want to take it down quite a bit. I have buffed them. I didn't want to take you through that because I want to get down to building the acrylic, but I'm going to put the um, prep step and the primer on them. And it is good to use the one that's required by the company. Just gently paint it on. The reason why it's good to use what the company recommends is because they've worked the whole system together. This is the primer. The primer goes on quite gently. Don't over primer the nail. That's not good. Usually one dip of the brush can do the entire hand. And you're just really focusing on the natural nail. You don't have to do it over top of the whole nail unless the whole nail is natural. There's a layer of acrylic, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, we're getting to the good stuff. This is actually really a difficult technique to do. We're going to sculpt a whole new nail but we are going to do a fade and fading a pastel color is actually quite hard. It's much easier to fade a glitter because you can break the glitter up, but pastel you can't. It's quite difficult. So you want to put your form on, making sure there's no gap that way. You want to make it as tight as possible under that natural nail. Applying forms is quite the technique within itself. So give yourself some time to learn that. Every finger, every nail is shaped so differently. So I always use a paper towel because I want it to catch on my stuff. I don't want to wreck my nice towels. Okay, here's beautiful number zero 09. Look at that cute little leaf. Just pull that up. Oh, that's such a beautiful pastel color. Okay. I'm going to get my liquid. I'll bring it right over here so we can see the liquid to powder ratio, how important that is. You know, doing nails it takes a lot of practice, a lot of dedication, a lot of passion because, you know, you're going to do a lot that you're not going to like. So be easy on yourself because it is hard. Just trying to gather as many tips as you can, like the video you're watching now. And liquid to powder ratio, whatever they want to call it, you know, wet stuff to dry stuff, whatever you want to call it. It's so important, it's the key to making this work for you. I'm gonna do this in an almond shape. Got my liquid, and I'm absorbing, oh, see, look at that, it's just too heavy. I'm gonna just get rid of him. This is um, not so much like acrylic, it's a very strong, heavy pigmented powder that I'm working with. It is not meant for structure, so I'm gonna do another layer, I'm gonna show you that over top. When I'm doing a color fade, I'm going to add this bead in here, and I'm not gonna fade this in here yet. I'm gonna create the end first. Let me get the liquid out of there, because you can see it's kind of running a bit. Because it's such a different pigmented acrylic, I haven't got my liquid ratio obviously down right away for this particular acrylic. It's, it's happy now just had to get some of that liquid out of there. But you can see that's not a fade, right? I'm just gonna soften it a little to make this job easier. But that's what's tough about this. These things are really quite hard to fade, this product. I will do a glitter one one day and you'll be able to see the difference. Maybe I should just do a direct comparison. That'll be fun to see that. So I'm gonna bring this out. Now I'm gonna make this layer quite thin. Because this is not my structure, this acrylic is not strong enough for structure. I'm going to be clear capping the whole thing to give it the strength. Now the secret to coming down, I haven't done this for a while, so hopefully I can do this. Do this in little bits. Don't try to do it in one lump. 
because you want to be able to fade this. Now there's many ways I've been doing this. I tried cutting this color with a uh, clear and just kind of trying to soften it that way, but I found it just didn't work as well. I found sometimes you can oversaturate the liquid and try to spread it that way. That works too a little bit, but I found the best way was just take it in littler beads to create that fade. So you can see how it's just starting to fade up. I can work with this later, I'll figure that out. But right now, I'm just trying to soften and just make it super, super thin. It's kind of like you're trying to like dissipating it. Right? It's just it's kind of trying to fade off into nothing. It's really hard to blur that edge. It just so much wants to go in a um, hard line. These are beautiful in Frenches because they do make a hard line quite nicely. So you can see it's starting to fade, but it's not quite there. So like I say, you can take a little extra liquid and you can sort of hit it. And you can see it kind of phew, will kind of soften a little bit. It'll sort of do that for you. But you don't want to do so much liquid that you're wasting a ton of liquid either. But you can see that kind of worked a little bit. So I found the best was just try to get good at it. It seemed to be, I know that's probably weird advice, but it definitely is a technique. But I got a few tricks to help us if we can't fade it completely. I got a few tricks to help it look like we did. It's not bad. So you want that fade to be quite soft. And it's literally what it is. It's just fading. It's just fading off into nothing. It's fading not too bad. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to try to fix now is this in here, this looks a little bit wobbly. Just gonna try to fade that off gently. I did find that if you're working with it and you're happy with it, you need to just let it set for a few seconds before you start messing around near it or beside it or on top of it because you'll ruin what you already have. So just give it maybe 30 seconds. Okay, so I think I like that faded part in there. I'm gonna go back up in here because this is the dry part. Might be a little bit long. I just don't want it to look wobbly this way when I look down on it. I want it to look very smooth. And that's starting to look much more smooth. Yeah. Me likey. Okay, now I did have a hard line with my natural nail and I can see it's sort of, sort of settling a little bit so I can see that hard line. That means the form is sort of slipping a little bit and the whole thing is just setting down just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna just fill in what I see there in that little line. Okay, now here's I find is a really good trick. I'm gonna take a look at my fade. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get a little picky right over here. I'm not quite happy with this. I'm just gonna see if I can soften that a bit more. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So then here's the trick. I'm gonna get my pink. This is the nail plate color. And with this pink, that's why I put my color down first. So when I put my pink at the cuticle area for the fill part, I'm gonna bring it over top of my fade a little bit to sort of soften it even more. I think that's probably the biggest tip for this stuff. It looks really the best. So I'm gonna grab a pink bead from my nail bed. And this is gonna soften it even more. So if you didn't do the softening the way you might really like to have it, this can help, it's like a cheat. This can help make it look even softer. I don't know if you can see that, but you see how it's kind of softening that? edge of blue. You can pull it right over top of the blue. Oh, that's great. I 
love that. That really softened it quite nicely. That softened it beautifully. I really so that's a great cheat. Just remember that, and um, it, it is really really hard to fade a pastel color. So keep that in mind when you're trying to do it, and give yourself some time to learn that because it's really tough. Just take it in smaller beads. Some of you have asked what the liquid is. It's not water. It's actually monomer. That's acrylic in a liquid form. When you do a nail like this, you must clear cap it, especially with this stuff, because it's not meant for structure, which means it's not meant for strength. So you want to take a bead of the clear, and you want to place it right over top of the stress point and right over top of that blue. The pink is a structured acrylic, but this color, this pastel specifically is not, so we want to make sure we encase it completely in clear. This is a little longer than what I'm going to do. Sometimes I just get carried away. But that is a little longer than what I'm going to shape it up to be. There you go. We have one. Mm -mm. That is going to be gorgeous. Love that. I'm just going to move in and just start doing all the colors that I've got here. Sometimes it's awkward. Doing yourself, it's much easier to do someone else, but I want to make sure it's nice and curvy. When you're picking up an acrylic bead for this, you don't need a lot of liquid. I'll put a little bit on the drier side. I'm gonna try to soften that hard edge. If you're putting on product and you find that your brush is sticking to it, you may have your brushes a little bit dirty. Now I'm gonna try to blend that. Okay, so I'm focusing on the fade area right now. I'll worry about the free edge part in a minute. See how I'm just taking little bead after little bead? Just do that. Don't try to do it all in one bead. There's a lot of designs you can do in one bead and this is not really one of them. The nicer I make this, the less filing there is. But I've got a drill. So it makes it a little easier for me. You mean e-file? Yes. See, when I first started this, we had no e-files. There was no e-files. See, to me, it looks kind of faded here, but when I go like that, I can see that it's not. So you can see that it is not really as faded as it looks this way for some reason. do a bead of pink at the cuticle area and this is the thing that can help soften that fade. The only thing I suggest if you work really fast let your blue dry in between a little bit let the pastel dry a bit in between just so that it doesn't move the pastel that you've put on there that you've taken the time to fade so gently. But look at that. That's gorgeous. It is quite a bit darker. Let me just get rid of this form and this is dry enough I can get rid of this form too but it is drying dark you can see the two different colors it's quite different okay now I will show you how I can use that little circle in between usually I just go like this right never usually use the donut but this is what some people do and some people will do this too in the form kind of loosen it up a little and then you put it under your finger form it Stick the points together. And then they will take this little circle. And you can take it and, right? Just so it holds that together so it doesn't pop open. 
So I'm going to get rid of this color and I'm breaking out the green. It's a very, very gentle, soft. Oh my goodness, that's just beautiful. Love that. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to go for it. That looks so pretty next to this blue color. goes the peach. Oh man, that is so soft and pretty. I just love that. Now you can see why it was so hard for me to decide which color should I do on the whole hand, right? I just had to have them all. And you want to soften that line across there. I know we're still going to fade it, but it's the depth that's really going to mess you up when you want to fade it. So you do want to soften it right away because if it hardens, oh, you're going to be so mad. Once this stuff hardens, it you do not have any negotiation with it whatsoever. It is done. Once it is hardened, if you don't like it, you're going to have to file it off. You cannot add more liquid to it to convince it to move around. It has got some too and it's just made up its mind. It's not going to move anymore. Because it's pink, it's going to probably blend quite nicely together. You know what I was thinking when I'm looking at these now? What? These should be called popsicle deals. <laughs> back to food. Yeah. We seem to get everything back to food. Really? I think so. We talked about food last time. Okay, look at the difference in the pink. Can you see that now? This is very peach. This one's rather pink. Maybe this time I'll start a little bit more with the fade. Let's see if I can do that. I'll start with the doing the fade section. Ooh, this is a stronger color, so it's not as gentle. Now I'm getting good at it. Took me five fingers. Usually when I wear a design, the client wants it. That happens all the time. So I'll say, so what do you want today? Actually, I had something in mind, but I like what you're wearing. It's just sort of power of suggestion, right? I do like this pink color, it's really pretty. Just a little bit in there. Soften that. Again, this is the pink, so when I fade it with the nail plate color, it should blend. definitely a fade but it's right oh that's so pretty okay so now I have to clear cap all these now clear capping again makes it strong gives it structure so you don't have to go right down to the cuticle because the pink that we did near the cuticle is a sculpting acrylic the um, colors are not a sculpting acrylic so you want to make sure that you get your clear capping over top of the color because it is the um, structure part of the nail. 
doesn't have to be crazy thick. Okay. Let's do the filing. Okay, there is a lot of filing involved in this, so I am gonna wear my little mask. Okay, so I'm gonna file them almond. Now this is a bit long. So I'm gonna take it right down. Gotta get the general shape of what you're looking for. I look at it probably from every single angle possible. I like quite a narrow almond, so I tend to make them quite slim and then come into an almond. I think it just looks best on my particular finger. Now you can finish one finger up at a time or you can just kind of file. When I'm working with clients, I literally take out this bit right here and just file them all up and get them all shaped basically how I want them and then I start to smooth them all down. And sometimes if I'm impatient, I really want to see it, I will finish one off. Just if I really want to see it and I can't wait. I'm almost to that point right now. But I'm trying to be all grown up and wait. See, I'm practicing patience. See, you should get like a general and then go to this one to find your general shape. This one's a bit long, I'm gonna take it down a bit more. And again, you can do this all by hand, but why when you have an e-file, right? Okay, now I'm gonna bring them in like at the wide part. I like to make them kind of narrow. I don't like them to be fatter than my actual finger. So I'm just gonna bring that in. Oh, look at that, it's so cute. Then we can fine tune it even more. So this is a coarse file. This is like a 180, 180. And then sometimes I'll take a softer one and I'll just sort of smooth it a little bit more. Then I check this way, then I look down this way, make sure it's coming like that. Then I can see that this one's a little bit, a little bit harder. Huh? It's a little bit thick on the one side, so I am going to, I'm kind of getting into the nitty gritty. I don't want to go that far. That could take forever. I could do a whole session on shaping. So now the next three steps are these files. So we can take the course, and you're, it's just a, I'll take this off for this. It's just a three step smoothing process basically. You don't wanna go right from the nail there to the fine. You gotta do the course and the medium in between. Otherwise it just leaves kind of a smooth scratches if that makes any sense. You gotta do the three steps. So there's course, medium, And fine. You can feel the difference with the fingertip too. If you feel in between, you can sure feel the difference. So I finished all the buffing and all the shaping, brought them all down to a nice point when you look down like that. Then it was so dusty, of course, you need to put some oil on. Just put it in the cuticle, massage it in, get rid of all that dusty look, then wash them really good, dry them really good, and we're now ready for the top coat. This is when it's all worth it. I always put two coats of the top coat polish on because you want it to remain shiny. The first coat kind of soaks in and kind of dulls a bit. So that second coat is really important for the shine. There we go. Oh, it was worth it. It's really pretty.
Outstanding. <laughs> I think my favorite colors are the green and the blue. I see things I could have done better, <laughs> but we'll just ignore that. <laughs> Let's check out those reveals. Now that I'm wearing this, I'm sure my clients are going to see it and I'm going to find somebody that's going to want all 10 done. I can't wait to do that. Thanks for watching my videos and you can always check me out on Instagram too. I'm having fun with that. I'll see you soon.